there's still quite a few details to finish off, but I think it's about time I um, put the wall in at the back. And I'm using cobalt blue, touch of white, Naples yellow, and a touch of pink. That's going to make a grey blue, and off we go. I think at this stage you need to stand back and think, well, what does this need? What's, what looks right? What looks wrong? And I think this plant does need a little bit more. You imagine as well that the shadow we've got on the pots is all on this side. So I want to make this side of the plant the darker side. Really beef up the shadow a bit with a purpley brown. I think we need a few more leaves on this plant, particularly where I've painted over them. I can put them back in. So the leaves that I've painted over with the brick with the wall colour have gone a bit blurry and vague. So I put some stronger colours colour leaves on. I think it'll work. Again you can see the brush making the shape of the leaves. Bit of a shadow on my spiky plant here. I haven't got any cement in my bricks so I'm going to use raw sienna and cobalt blue. Put a few shadows on the leaves. I've taken the masking fluid off and I'm now going to finish with some body colour. I'm going to use um, magic colour but gouache, white watercolour will do. So I'm just going to add the white to the green. So now the green is opaque. I'm going to add some detail. See this, this brush is longer than the other sword liner that I used. By pressing up and down you get these lovely, lovely shaped lines. You really get quite carried away with these, they're so pretty and so effective and really, really this is a real old tangle of foliage at the bottom. And the brush is really very laden with paint so it is splashing a bit, we'll add a few splashes. A few spots of white, just give it that sort of speckled dapple look. The only other thing I want to do is just with some white acrylic just spot in some of the white flowers. Now, a lot of people don't think that you should use white at all but I think rules are there to be broken. It isn't using the paint traditionally, I realise that but there again I'm not a particularly traditional watercolourist. I think I should call that a day. After working in a tight way, I think it's nice to loosen up a bit and uh, play around with the colour and the uh, watercolours a bit more. So I've pulled out this photograph of the Amalfi Coast. I'm not going to follow it exactly, I just want to get the idea of it and I'm certainly going to change the colours. So we'll start by adding some different drawing media on this one, just to see what happens. So down the front here we'll use a bit of wax and also 
I'm going to do a painting where the pencil lines play a part, uh, often in watercolour. It's regarded as a bit un uh, undesirable to have pencil lines showing, but I think we should break as many rules as possible and do exactly what we want to do. I'm going to um, limit the palette a little bit. I'm going to concentrate on limey greens and oranges and blue for the sea. This is actually sea here. The next thing we need to do is to turn the painting round and work on it upside down for the sea. Right, firstly, rather than wet the paper with with a brush, I'm going to just spray some water on it with this spray here. I'm going to work firstly in cobalt turquoise because here the sea is going to be a bit shallower and often when the sea is shallower it takes on a different hue, doesn't it? So that's my shallow bit of sea. You'll remember from the photograph that the sea wasn't a bit like this in colour but I'm exaggerating the colours because I think sometimes the colours we hold in our minds are different from the reality. And this is a mixture of helio turquoise and Prussian blue. So in a way I'm doing a sort of wash, but I'm not a terribly careful one. I'm quite happy to let the streaks show. Plus what you're getting here is the white showing through as the paint's running out of the brush which it's more likely to happen if you work on rough paper than on knot paper, which is smoother. And that is reminiscent of the twinkle that you get on the sea. So we can go fairly dark at the top. And if I feel it's going to be too dark when we finish, I might just trim it off. But for the moment, we'll go fairly dark at the top. Now that's not finished yet, but that's the, that's the sort of start of the sea. Next, I'll wash that brush and I'll use an angled brush like this to lift some of the colour out. And the longer version of this brush which you can twizzle in your fingers to get some, some wave effects. So I haven't looked at the photograph at all. It's, uh, I'm just inventing it because it's going to be sort of it's almost a semi-abstract painting this. So I'm going to leave the sea at this stage and I might come back to it later. See what it looks like when it dries, I think. It's dry enough for me to carry on working with particularly as I'm going to be doing this hillside here. And I'm aware that I need to keep this fairly light, so the, water, the paint needs to be fairly used fairly thinly. So we'll see what this sort of colour looks. I'm mixing Indian yellow and green gold together. It's probably a bit lurid, but we can change that in a bit. Now, I think I might just give that a bit of a spray, just to make it even thinner. The brush I'm using is a size 12 mop. So, if you use a big brush like this, you can't put the detail in, so it stops you from being too pernickety about every last detail. I might just let that run down a bit. Again, I should be coming back to this. It's just, it's just the sort of the first layer of colour. Some of it I shall cover up and some of it I won't. So that looks like the sun is falling on it. It's very bright and, and sunlit. This side of the hillside I'm going to go much darker with. So I'm going to put some burnt sienna with the green gold. See what that looks like. So that might just catch the edge of the the light. I think I think I might put some sepia in that and some brown madder so that it is actually much darker. Burnt sienna is there too. I'm going to avoid the buildings a bit at the moment. 
I'm starting to feel it needs to be a bit wetter, so I might give it another spray. Start adding a bit of green gold in now, just to sort of marry it up with the other side a bit more. And here, where I put the wax crayon, we start to get some resist. It's a resist technique, so the paint won't cover where the wax crayon is. It's not quite working how I expected, so I might have to do something with that. Let's try putting a bit more on. Oh, now you see where it's the paint's drier up here, it's having a different effect again, isn't it? And this isn't something I've done many times before. I'm really just playing around, seeing what happens. Starting to think it might need some drying time next. But let me just show you this beautiful orange. This is translucent orange. And it's just, I love it with turquoise. I just think those two colours are just beautiful and they're very reminiscent of the Mediterranean. I might even just splash a bit on as well. Of course, warmer colours in the foreground will give you a sense of distance. I'm not sure what I'm going to do here yet, so I'll leave that. I think I might leave that to dry again.